Stay Home or Face the Fire by Ja, the survival plan for all human plus beings. Chapter 3, The Creation of Human Animals. Human plus beings, as you know them, are a combination of four things, and they are a human animal, the body that you are temporarily using, with its own separate life, human and mortal. John 3.6 that which is born of the flesh is human, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit, a spirit being, a human plus being. A soul, the real you, which is spirit slash energy, Venusian the immortal, John 3, 6. The Holy Spirit, the devil, that is, two telepathic voices that every normal human plus being has in his head. When a human baby is born, it has no soul. But it is alive and breathing with its own human animal life, Surah 1530, before the soul enters the body. So the fallen angels submitted themselves, Luke 955, all of them together. Some never have a soul, because they are so substandard that they are of no use, being unable to be used to teach a soul anything, not even humility. At the other end of the scale, a totally senile person is a living human animal left alive after the soul has left it. The human body is nothing more than a very sophisticated, by human standards, organic living computer that self-reproduces and self-repairs if it is not too badly damaged. It is a combination of smaller computers, example brain, kidneys, liver, etc., collectively making up the whole, pre-programmed to have selfish animal instincts that your soul has to learn to overcome. The physical human brain operates the body and its emotions, but your mind and its feelings belong to your soul. That's why Jesus said that the flesh is worthless and that it is only the spirit, soul, the real you, that has value. John 3, 6 and 6, 3. That which is born of the flesh is human. That which is born of the spirit is spirit, a spirit being human being. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words, truth, that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. It would serve absolutely no useful purpose for a soul to enter into a baby whilst it's still inside a woman's body for months. The reason that the soul is placed inside the body, as has already been explained, is to learn that it could not possibly learn anything inside a baby that is inside a womb inside a woman's body. A short period of time after the baby's birth it undergoes a change and suddenly has recognition and awareness that is when the soul has entered the body along with the Holy Spirit and the devil, the enemy within. The Holy Spirit or God, the good voice, is planted inside the human animal body with and connected to the soul. It is the soul's telepathic communication with God to try to simplify things for you to be able to understand more easily if you can think for a moment of God as being like a master computer and memory bank, fountain of knowledge, with the Holy Spirit as the soul's connection and personal computer terminal linked to the master one by which each soul is told and taught privately, individually and personally what is good and what is evil by the Lord, then you will have a better understanding of how things work. You can request and receive information from God by learning to use your telepathic connection, the Holy Spirit, 1 John 2.27. But the anointing which ye have received from him abides in you, and you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even like it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. Seek and ye shall find, but only if you seek with all your heart, Jeremiah 29.13, and in childlike humility. And ye shall seek me and find me, when you shall search for me with all your heart. Unfortunately, all you ever do is ask him to give you this or that, or to do this or that for you. You never ask him what you can do for him, do you? Isn't that very selfish and one-sided? The other voice that everyone has in their head 
and knows perfectly well it is evil, is obviously the devil's voice. God will only answer your questions if they are the right kind of questions, and if you ask him in the right way, with the correct attitude, and then only if the answer will help you spiritually, not materially, unless it will help you in some way to complete the task he has set for you, or is a genuine need, not a want. He will answer you when you are ready for the answer, which may not be when you think you are ready for it. You may get an answer immediately, or in an hour, or a week, a month, a year, or even ten or more. But you will get the answer exactly when you are ready for it, and you will be reminded, as you were given the answer, of exactly when it was that you asked the question. Then you should realize yourself that when you asked the question, you weren't ready for the answer, and first had to be taught to understand the answer and were only ready for the answer when you were given it, that's when you really ought to say thank you. He will help you with everything you do if you ask him to. He will not help you to do anything that is wrong for you or anyone else. So, if you don't get an answer, you are asking the wrong things, and or in the wrong way, or you are not ready for the answer. If and when you start to do his will, he will also provide for you materially, but only if you believe it he will, and then only what you need to be able to do his will, and probably not what you want, which would be wrong for you. If you have more than you need, someone else, Satan, is paying you. Learn to want only what you need to be able to do his will. God will only give you what you need and no more, so that he can keep you on a short leash and under control to enable him to guide you more efficiently. If he gave you more than you need, he would lose control of you, and you may go astray, being less dependent on his supply continuing. This short leash situation also lets him test your faith, to the last second, before he supplies your need. If you are doing his work, he knows what you are going to need before you do, and is already arranging the supply before you even feel the need. That is why Jesus told the man who wanted to be perfect that as well as keeping the commandments as he said that he had done all his life, he must sell his possessions and give the money to the poor. The poor was the disciple's collective purse, kitty or bag, that Judas kept, John 12:6), thereby placing himself completely in God's hands because only then could God teach, provide for, and control him efficiently. Matthew 19:21, John 12:6. This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the poor and bear what was put therein. Matthew 19:21. Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and put it in the purse, kitty, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. When you work for him, and thereby your own salvation, it is a partnership. You have to complete the task, and he has to supply the tools and materials. He will otherwise. How could he expect you to finish the job? You just have to have faith and trust in him. He will not fail you, but he will make you wait until the last second to test your faith in him and his supply. It's like being on a magical mystery tour, and can take you anywhere on earth, wherever he can use you and teach you best. It is fun and magical, real magic. God has to provide for you and for you to eat and drink in order to keep body and soul together. So a human animal body is only a prison cell for the soul within a prison, earth, millions of miles from home. Maximum security, but open prison from which no one has ever escaped and from which no one ever will. That is why mankind, even if allowed, would never find human life anywhere except on this planet. There is life throughout the universe, but not human life, because the human body is not needed anywhere else except on this prison planet to serve the sole purpose for which it was designed and created. God created the human plus being, human animal body plus soul, so that he can discipline the soul being and punish it if and when it does wrong. 
A soul in its free state is energy and therefore invisible to the human eye. It does not feel heat, cold, hunger, thirst, or pain in any and all of its various forms, and therefore cannot be punished and disciplined, only destroyed. Unlike humans, it has no needs. Revelation 7.16 They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. It is not possible to teach an evil soul in its free state to be good by sending it to bed with no supper because it does not get hungry. It is not possible to smack its backside because it does not have one, and in any case, it does not feel pain. The soul is normally locked inside the human animal body for the lifetime of the body and is locked in such a way that it becomes an integral part of the body. Revelation 3.7 and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. And therefore feels whatever the body feels. Then, by inflicting pain on the body, the soul feels it, and so can be punished to varying but exact degrees, depending upon what it deserves by the various types and severities of pain. Example, physical, mental, heartache, hardship, disabilities, and deformities, etc. This is all designed to teach humility and the destroying of self, selfishness. All pain is attached to the self, and when the self goes, so does all pain. Life is a perpetual crucifixion designed to destroy your selfishness, greed, and materialism. God talks to the soul by telepathy using the good voice, which is the same voice that Satan, using the lies of religion and superstitious nonsense, has deceived you all into believing is your conscience. It is not your conscience. It is God talking to each and every one of you by telepathy, via your connection, the Holy Spirit.